So patients need to be their own best advocate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so we talked a little bit earlier about Vice President Biden's Cancer Moonshot Initiative. You know, how are you feeling that this may potentially help to advance the way that we diagnose and treat uh, patients living with cancer? Well, I think what is always important is I think President Biden gave the country a vision. Mm -hmm. And I think we are at a point in time where with all the progress we've made, we may not be very far from being able to cure some cancers. And I'm, I'm truly saying curing, and we always hesitate to use the, the C word here, uh, but we may be on the cusp, or at least a few of them, there's just a little bit more work needed. And this, uh, the way President Biden has been galvanizing the entire community uh, to aspire to, to get to that goal, to get to the moon uh, within a time frame of five years, and that's a time frame that he has put in place, uh, five to ten years, I think it is very inspiring. It really, uh, I think, will bring much needed um, coordination together. You know, a lot of you know, either industry or academia, they're all working in silos. What President Biden is saying is, let's all work together to, uh, to this common cause. And it's important sometimes, you know, uh, there's all kinds of divisions uh, in our country, uh, but I think this, this is one aspect where we can all unite around. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a great leadership from President, Vice President Biden to, to do this for us. Mm -hmm. We're at a really interesting time where we're talking about collaborating, all these different cancer organizations collaborating, and yet we're also talking about personalized medicine, mm -hmm. you know, so it's kind of interesting to see how we take this big data and then we drill down into an individual's genome, really, to, to inform their care. Yes, and this is something that we have done, you know, for MMRF, precision medicine is nothing new. We've done uh, doing this back in 2004 when uh, Eric Lander was at the NCI presenting his vision around what would become the Cancer Genome Atlas to learn more, to sequence 25 major cancers, to learn about their blueprint, learn about what they look like. And myeloma was not part of that list of 25. So, uh, and it turned out that thanks to this wonderful myeloma community, uh, myeloma was the second and probably the first cancer to have a large number of its genome uh, sequence. And since then, we said it's nice, it was 250 patients, uh, and it was snapshots in time. Some were really diagnosed, some were relapsed patients. So we followed that with a, an initiative called Compass. Now we're mm -hmm. following a thousand patients for the entire journey throughout the disease, trying to do exactly that, to learn about how the disease itself uh, evolves and can outsmart the treatment we throw at it. Um, and for example, some of the things we found, and this is, it goes back to your, your point, why is it important that all these cancer groups yeah. work together? One of the findings we've made is an alteration of a gene called BRAF, which in myeloma is altered in only 5% of patients, but that's the major alteration in, in skin cancer, melanoma. And a drug was developed in, in melanoma, in skin cancer, uh, which has been uh, very active in those patients. And now we're bringing this drug into myeloma. So I think by working together, aggregating all of that data, um, we will be able to find common threads or maybe uh, realize that some discoveries that were made in one cancer now mm -hmm. are applicable to another cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so in some way it's personalized to a patient and let's also figure out that uh, the disease within the patient evolves. So what might work for a patient at one point in time will likely not work at some point later on in time. So it's personalized for a patient, but it's, um, I think, it's universal for cancer. Mm -hmm. Is the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation presenting any studies at this conference? Yeah, I believe we have seven uh, studies being presented at ASCO on a number of clinical trials that mm -hmm. we've been pursuing in Oncarsocium to, to help these patients who basically are running out of options, need brand new drugs, new options. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, 
the fight is not over and you continue to fight for our patients. Mm -hmm. So if you could think over the landscape of all the advancements in technology that we've had over the last couple of years, what would you say has had the biggest impact on cancer research? I think first of all the um, all the advancement around you know, next generation sequencing technologies and genomics and also the parallel advances and the, the top technology and big data I think that was a, a, a huge a huge contributor the other one is these, these very recent um, wins that we had with the immune agents uh, for the first time now we're seeing these very long durable response up until a few years ago we were able to put a cancer uh, into sleep for maybe a few years but it would come back but now with these new agents uh, for example these immune checkpoint inhibitors we're seeing patients who are many 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 years out with the disease still in check mm -hmm. so I would say these two advances uh, made a major difference and will uh, be even more important as we move forward with precision medicine. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Eau thank you so much for sitting with me today and I hope you enjoy the rest of ASCO. Thank you so much. A pleasure.